Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. In this video, we're going to look at four examples of applying logarithmic differentiation. If you want a little bit more of a lecture and background into implicit differentiation and using logarithmic differentiation, I'll link it here in the upper right corner. But basically, I just want to jump into some extra examples for everybody. Now, a couple of scenarios when you're going to use logarithmic differentiation. One of the most obvious is when it would just be too painful to have to apply all the typical rules of differentiation. So if I'm looking here, I would have to not only apply the product rule, the quotient rule, and then obviously the chain rule in order to differentiate y with respect to x. And it's sounding like a true nightmare, like this is cruel and unusual punishment. And when that scenario pops up, you think, hmm, probably I should be using logarithmic differentiation. They happen to tell us in the directions, but I just want to clue you in so you know when to use it moving forward. So first off, you're not going to take any derivatives just yet. You're going to take the natural log of both sides. So we have ln of y equals ln of x times square root of x to the fifth plus one over x plus six to the two thirds. And the whole point of taking the natural log of both sides is that we can use all our lovely log properties, expand this right hand side so it's much more user friendly when it comes time to differentiate. All right, if you forgot your log properties, have no fear. I have a nice little pre calc video, I'll link it here if you want to run through the properties, how to expand logarithms. But basically, I'm going to rewrite the right hand side using three logarithms now. I'm going to have natural log of x plus natural log of the square root of x to the fifth plus one minus natural log of x plus six to the two thirds. So I've got this minus sign here because remember when we have division um, within the argument, then that turns into subtraction of another logarithm. And then whatever's being multiplied, you can split those up using addition. We're not done breaking things down. I want to bring these exponents down in the front. Remember, square root is raising something to the one half power, so I'm also going to bring a one half in the front. So before I take the derivative, I'm going to rewrite this right hand side as one half ln x to the fifth plus one minus two thirds ln x plus six. And now it's just going to be such a dream to differentiate. Oh, let me tell you. So here we go. When I take the derivative of the left-hand side, be careful. We have to apply the rules of implicit differentiation. Natural log of y, the derivative would be 1 over y times dy dx, right? It's not ln of x on the left-hand side. It's ln of y, so we got to multiply by dy dx. All right, that's the worst of it, I promise. Next term, derivative of ln of x, that's just 1 over x, plus... Keep that constant, one half. Remember, I have to remind my students this all the time. You don't need to do product rule if you just have a constant times a function, okay? The constant just comes along for the ride. If you're hell-bent on doing the product rule, you're just always going to have zero when you take the derivative of the constant times the other function, so it's just a waste of time. Okay, derivative of ln of x to the fifth plus one. So derivative of ln of something, I don't care what the something is, it's always one over the something. And then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of the something, the argument specifically. So derivative of x to the fifth plus one is just gonna be five x to the fourth, good. Minus last term, two thirds, times derivative of ln of x plus 6 is 1 over x plus 6. Applying the chain rule, derivative of 1x plus 6 is just 1. I'll put it there so you know we thought about it, but nothing happened. Okay, now we just clean things up. So let's see what we got going on. We have 1 over y times dy dx equals... 1 over x plus, I'm going to write this as 5x to the 4th over 2 times x to the 5th plus 1 minus 2 over 3 times x plus 6. 
And then we're almost done. You don't need to get a common denominator for all the terms on the right-hand side. I know you've probably gotten in that habit when you've taken derivatives um, previously after using maybe like the product rule, quotient rule. But with logarithmic differentiation, you get a little bit more leeway. You don't have to simplify so intensely. Okay, isn't that nice? Um, and so in order to get dy dx all by itself, I got to multiply both sides of the equation by y. So now we're going to have dy dx is equal to, instead of y, I'm going to write what y was equal to originally, this lovely function right here. And I'll put that in the front. It'll just look a wee bit better, don't you think? Yes, I think so. Oh, good. I'm glad you do. Okay, so then we're going to be left with now x radical x to the fifth plus 1 over x plus 6 to the 2 thirds. That's y. Okay, I wrote it in the front. Don't get all topsy-turvy just because I wanted to make it more aesthetically pleasing. And then we have times 1 over x plus 5x to the fourth over 2 times x to the fifth plus 1 minus 2 over 3 times x plus 6. Oh, I love it so much. Let's box it. Oh, 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 it's missing half a parentheses over there. Oh, oh, don't worry. Good. Did you like that one? Hmm, I hope so. Okay. Got another one similar. Again, differentiate with respect to x. So y equals cube root of 3x plus 1 times x plus 4 squared over x to the 4th plus 6 times x plus 8. So, I mean, really, the right-hand side looks rather grotesque. So it's definitely time. Let's take the natural log of both sides. Even if they didn't tell me, I would say, mm -mm, there has to be a less painful way to do this. Right away, instead of leaving this as the cube root, I'm going to write everything um, as rational exponents. So I'm going to have 3x plus 1 times x plus 4 squared over x to the fourth plus six times x plus eight. And then this is all raised to the one third power. I'm just getting ready to apply my properties of logarithms because I know I'm gonna wanna move that one third in the front. So now I have natural log of y equals one third times. We're gonna have four logarithms now. So I'll have natural log of three x plus one plus Keep up. I'm going to move the 2 to the front as well. 2 times natural log of x plus 4 minus natural log of x to the 4th plus 6 minus natural log x plus 8. Okay, so now everything's fully expanded. And then we're ready to go ahead and differentiate both sides with respect to x. So derivative of the left-hand side, that'll always be the same. 1 over y times dy dx equals one third. Now I'm going to teach you something slick when you take derivatives of natural log. Okay. The derivative is always going to be one over whatever the argument is. And then when we apply the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of the argument of the stuff inside. So that will end up in the numerator naturally. So we can just already cut to the chase. You see, I'm just going to put three X plus one down here and then three in the numerator. That's the chain rule happening right in front of your eyes. Plus 2 times derivative of ln of x plus 4 is just going to be 1 over x plus 4. Let's put the 2 in the numerator now. Minus derivative of ln of x to the 4th plus 6. So we're going to have x to the 4th plus 6 down here. Derivative of x to the 4th plus 6 is 4x cubed. Oh, so slick. Minus, what's the last term's derivative going to be? Mm -hmm. 1 over x plus 8. So good. Look at that. And then last thing, we're, we're trying to find dy dx, right? So I need it all by itself on that side of the equation. So we're going to multiply everything by y. And then now we can write out our final answer. So dy dx, I'm going to leave the 1 third in the front. And then y will come next. So remember, y was equal to that whole mess. I'll write it just as it was originally. So cube root, 
Let's see if this comes out nice. Oh, it came out fabulously. Okay, 3x plus 1, x plus 4 squared over, straighten up, x to the 4th plus 6 times x plus 8. And then you just copy down everything here. Like I said, don't fret about getting a common denominator. Um, when you do logarithmic differentiation, usually it's just um, an exercise so you can practice applying the rules. It's not like we're going to need to find critical values or anything with these. Okay. What am I talking about? You'll see soon enough. Okay. That one's done. Did you like it? On a scale of 1 to 10, how tricky was it? Hmm. If you know what to do, it shouldn't be hard. It's just when you're totally clueless or if you're the poor chap who tries to just differentiate without taking the natural log of both sides first. What, what a mess, let me tell you. Okay, another scenario in which you absolutely have to apply logarithmic differentiation, not just that, oh, it makes life nicer, okay, is when you have variables in the base of your function as well as the exponent. In that case, there's no way besides using logarithmic differentiation. So here we go. We have y equals cosine of x raised to the x. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. ln of y equals ln of cosine x to the x. And I'm going to now move the exponent down to the front of the logarithm and multiply by it. So now I have ln of y equals x times ln of cosine x. Very good. Now we can go ahead and differentiate both sides with respect to x. So derivative of the left, 1 over y dy dx equals, now be so, so careful. For this lovely little right-hand side, we have to apply the product rule. Here's one function. Here's another function. Okay. So they take turns having their derivatives taken. That's how I think about it. Derivative of x is 1. Multiply by the other function left alone. Plus, now leave x alone. He already had his turn. Times derivative of ln of cosine of x. So derivative of ln of cosine of x is going to be 1 over cosine of x. And then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of cosine of x, which is mm -hmm, negative sine x. Did you remember the negative? If a trig function has the prefix co, its derivative will be negative. Cosine, cosecant, cotangent. They all have negative derivatives. All right, calculus is done. Let's just clean it up now. Send in the cleanup crew. So we've got 1 over y dy dx equals, this is just natural log cosine of x. The second term I can write is minus x times Check this out. Sine of x over cosine x, that's our good friend tangent x. Yes, love it. And then last thing, multiply both sides by y. y was originally cosine of x to the x. So that's what I'm going to put in my final answer. So dy dx equals cosine of x raised to the x times ln of cosine x minus x tangent x. Boom. How did you like that one? Maybe a little ooh, trickier because you had to do the product rule, but you can you can handle it. All right. That's all I wanted. Last one for you. It's one of my favorites. I've put it on an exam a few times in the past. Isn't it lovely? Yeah. Okay. We're just going to have a sea of natural logs, and you're going to have to focus to keep your wits about you. So natural log of both sides, ln of y equals ln of the original function, which was ln of x to the ln of x. I switched colors so you could see what's going on. So this y is right here. I took the natural log of it, and then this is originally what was on the right-hand side. Here it is, and I've taken the natural log of all of that, okay? What's the point of taking another natural log? So I can move the exponent to the front, and I will have to apply the product rule, okay? 
So ln of y equals, we've got an ln of x in the front, times ln of ln of x. So this little ln of x that got moved to the front, here he is. And then this ln of ln of x is now right here. Can you see what happened? This is where the pink circled guy went. Okay, I don't want it to get too messy though. So there, now we can take the derivative. Yes, oh yes. Derivative of the left-hand side, one over y dy dx equals, it's product rule time. Oh yes it is, here's function number one, function number two. Derivative of ln of x is one over x Leave the other function alone. So I'm gonna leave it alone, ln of ln of x. Okay, plus, now I'm gonna leave the ln of x alone, this, left alone, times derivative of this spicy little fellow. So derivative of ln of something is always one over the something, in this case, one over ln of x, and then by the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of the something, which is ln of x, so I have to multiply by a 1 over x. The calculus is done. Did you follow? Yes, are we okay? We're surviving. Okay, let's see if we can clean up. Calculus is done. 1 over y dy dx equals, I can write this as ln of ln of x over x plus, oh no, this is just fabulous. Look, look, we can cancel an ln of x here and then I have one over x. And my goodness, we didn't have to do a single thing and we already have a common denominator on the right. So fortunate, it's gonna look so great. Multiply both sides by y. And now we have dy dx equals, what was y? ln of x raised to the ln of x. Okay, okay. Times ln of ln of x plus one all over x. Ooh, that was the grand finale. Was that your favorite of the four? It certainly was my favorite. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'm also on TikTok and Instagram at Math TV with Professor V. We're doing all sorts of fun things over there. So give me a follow and stay tuned. I have more calculus videos coming your way, more algebra, all sorts of good stuff. I also take requests. If you're part of my Patreon, I'll put the link in the description. Then you can get access to exclusive content as well. See you later, guys.